In Tokyo The Last War, Kato is awakened once again in the last years of the Second World War, realising that the Great Empire is about to topple. In the book, he goes about his work and conspires with the Chinese and the Koreans to overthrow their conquerors. Though not through benevolent means, but to weaken the Empire and assure its final destruction. In the movie, however, he is fully instrumental in the assassination attempt on Roosevelt, a plan vehemently opposed by the Freemasons of Japan. But in a last-ditch attempt to save Japan from the madness of the Axis powers, the Masons manage to turn their assassination attempts on Adolf Hitler, convincing him to shoot himself, thus assuring a quicker end to the war. Carter was defeated again and banished through a prayer to Masakado to save the city one last time. And amidst the ruins of a defeated Japan, Masakado's tomb is untouched as Japan once again rebuilds out of the rubble brought about from the war and Kato's obsession. The Last War is an interesting addition to the Taito film series. Not so much as it deviates slightly from its source material, but in the choice of director and tone as well. Directed by Takisei Ichise, famed for more famous works later on known as Ring, and Dark Water, The Last War goes for a more exotic tone of horror that Western audiences can identify with much better than The Last Great Megalopolis. Which is kind of sad in a way as the film was never released in the West, so I'm doing this review with my limited knowledge of Japanese and plot snippets from the internet. Ichise's stamp can be seen throughout, especially when Shinato returns to play his titular role as Kato, but he is far more brooding Terminator-esque and a silent killer than he was in the first film. It's slow paced, yes, but you can feel the pace as easily as you can see in any of Ichi Chase's film, which actually grabs your attention. Kato is also far more physical than he is spiritual in this movie, preferring to take down his victims with his brute strength rather than his dark magics. I actually like this film as the best in the live action trilogy as it's very easy to watch even without the subtitles, much more comfortable to follow and actually gives us a more comfortable conclusion in the conflict that the novel doesn't touch upon. Despite its deviations, which are glaringly obvious if you've read the novel, it's a wonderful adaption in my opinion, not as grandiose as its predecessor, no, but certainly easier on the eyes. It's a film long demanding a release here in the West, if only for its minor audience, and it's a shame we may never see it over here. Which brings us to Taito Monogatari Gaiden, the most disappointing entry into this trilogy of cartoon movies. What makes this sad is whilst it's not officially part of the trilogy but more of a side story, it wasn't even released by Toho which shows more what I see as a real contempt for the film, but sadly it also exposes a great deal of misunderstanding on the director's part as to what the writer was trying to put across. Set in a mental hospital adjacent to the tomb of Masakado, a young male nurse with a psychotic necrophilic condition becomes obsessed with the legend of Kato Yasunori and slowly becomes possessed by the evil Onomijin. Keiko Tatsuyuma is now an old bag lady living on the streets and becomes aware that her old nemesis is taking on a new form and must regain her resolve to combat the evil entity one more time. Like I said, it's not official canon, just a side story written by the original author. The creators don't really go out of their way to say it's a part of the trilogy, stating its side story alternate universe foundations, but marketing-wise it didn't really go out of their way to discourage it either. It's darker, bloodier and certainly seedier than its predecessors, with more violence and sex scenes thrown in for good measure. It is disturbing to watch as many modern day exploitation horrors, and Kato, whilst undeniably frightening in his possessed mask form, is relegated to little more than a slasher than a real threat to the nation. As a side story, it has its place in the Taito legends, don't get me wrong, and works as a curiosity and experimentation. And I do understand what the writer was trying to put across, throwing in the mysticism surrounding the Kato legend that the last war failed to touch upon, but what we are left with is a disappointing splat than an explosive finale that many Tato fans were looking forward to. And sadly, this would be the last time we would see Kato in action for a long time. Until a kids movie came up, and that's for part four tomorrow. 
Yes, I know, I promised three, but research has left me feeling that there is still much to tell in the saga of Kato Yasunori, including one film where he didn't even make an appearance.